Let's have a discussion about Season of Discovery. Of doing this video, we are just past two weeks into Season of Discovery, and it has been an amazing ride so far. There has been True, but it does feel like it's been a lot longer than that. Been raiding, PvPing, and just trying to figure out how best to play my class given all the new runes and abilities. And everyone else has been figuring out their classes too. And it's really What kind of figuring out are we honestly talking about here? There's nothing to figure out almost honestly at this point. The runes are made and built that there is, you know, not that much of mixing and matching that you can do. For example, I'm playing rogues and shamans. There's the quite obvious poison build, there's quite obviously the backstab build, and there's quite obviously uh, the sinister strike replacement uh, build. And for shamans, there's the elemental build with lava burst, there's the lava lash build with dual building enchantments, tank build? And, well, heal it build. It's, it's so hard to not get everything perfectly in the runes. The runes don't add a lot of variety here, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, if someone has trouble picking runes, the correct runes out for your loadout, I'm just gonna blatantly say that. If you have ever had trouble picking the right runes for a Season of Discovery, you may be unquestionably autistic starting to show so today's video was one i was on the fence about making because i know we are so early into the season and things very well may change in the near future again it's been about two weeks and we've only had a handful of raid resets i also fully appreciate many players won't have had the chance to hit level 25 yet and that is fine but my really i actually thought that this I, I i thought the same honestly at the start but now i'm not thinking that at all I have my second character level 25. It's it's such a breeze leveling now. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just... When, when Classic first came out, leveling was harder. It felt a lot, lot harder. Now leveling feels like a breeze. No problems, you know. Casual play and you're probably going to be level 25 in what? A week? Without any problem? And I mean casual play. I mean two or three hours leveling a day. That's not a lot. Myself, I like to look at the numbers. I like to see how different classes are doing out of interest, and to get an idea of how Season of Discovery really has impacted the game so far, and it is trending in a certain direction, I will say that much. I also realise the devs in the season didn't set out to make a near perfectly balanced experience, where we are all within a few percentage of each other on the damage. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think Blizzard can balance anything. They have not balanced a single game ever blizzard is the only company that has never came even close to balancing a single game that they have and they have had a lot of games it's crazy that they have never actually got have uh, come even close to being balanced starcraft 2 is not balanced by the way starcraft 1 is the most balanced game that blizzard has and it's only balanced because the community begged blizzard to please not update the game ever again and then they balance the game through map making yeah crazy stuff damage meter, nor do I expect that from Classic, to be honest. In fact, Agrend himself has been clapping back at people jumping to conclusions about how their class is performing already, and I love to see that directly from somebody who's in charge of this game. And as a follow-up to that, just before I was about to release the video, Blizzard have done a huge round of buffs for some of the classes suffering most- Uh, Lolt, not gonna lie, did not read a single change. Also, you could see uh, raid add-ons here when he was in Black Phantom Deaths. Bruh, these, these raids are so easy, you do not need any add-ons to do it. You just need, need, you need to pay attention slightly, and there you have it. You, do, you don't need a flying, flashing button in the, in the screen telling you, uh, It's happening now! Get away! Yeah, that's not necessary. Just in the current raid tier. I guess if we throw them enough extra numbers, eventually they will work, but I- Yeah, this was- I don't know. I, I'm i playing an elemental shaman, by the way, but I only switched to elemental when I was- uh, Well, I got the uh, lava, uh, lava rune. Th that's it, lava burst rune, I mean. 
Oh, yeah, I was playing Enchantment before. This 150 weapon, uh, weapon damage upgrade, completely not necessary in my opinion. I was already, uh, I was already uh, mowing down three to four mobs without rest, without any problem using a level lash. Stuff's really good. The overload uh, buff though definitely, definitely was necessary. I still think there are likely to be reoccurring problems, but today I want to talk about something which I think is worth giving feedback on, because right now it's more than just X class good, Y class bad, and again I'm sure they are aware of this and have plans for changes, but I think in the interest of the season being a great experience for everyone, this is a topic worth bringing up. But first a quick word from today's sponsor, Watcher of Realms. Watcher wow. of Realms is a free to play strategy game. Uh, they have not sponsored me ever so uh watch the realm shit game do not play let's bring up the picture warcraft logs black fathoms deep over a range of two weeks 95th percentile yep there's the rogue <laughs> let's see which fire mage there you go the out of mana always fire mage does less damage than not cane mage that's great elemental sh Okay, I have not been in a raid with my elemental shaman, but considering the fact my mana is infinite, lava lava burst literally is eight seconds cooldown, crits for four hundred without any any biscuit, and fifty percent of damage does like two hundred extra damage. You're telling me elemental shaman damage is gonna be below everything like this? This is not real. This cannot be real. This is how the top 5% performers for each class are doing. Unbelievable. There's a pretty big gap between the top and the bottom. That's the first thing you'll notice here. But that isn't really the point I want to get across. I also wanna... Is this... Is this overall? Because we can... Are these graphs overall? Or are these graphs, for example, like America? Because I'm not gonna lie. Not even a week ago, I watched Mitch Jones' live stream where he was raiding Black Phantom Deaths, and they couldn't pug it. They literally got ashes to ash it, which is crazy, okay? Which is blatantly crazy. <laughs> Dude, none of these bosses are hard. You don't need consumables, you don't need anything, but I constantly see America just, you know, not wipe and whatnot. Dude, I was in a puck the first time I, I, I did the raid. No problems whatsoever. No Discord, no nothing. First time encountered the mechanics. No, people were not decked out of their minds. If they were, I would not probably have uh, landed in that rando group. But, you know, everything was fine. Can change this down to 75th percentile here or even 50th and it's a similar story as to which classes are the ones doing well the point is that in every example the classes at the top deal mainly or entirely physical damage and the classes doing not so well deal mainly or entirely magical damage well yeah to be fair that was to be expected uh most classes cannot sustain the man as much as i can see Again, I have not done a single raid on my Elemental Shaman yet, but I have a feeling that maybe I'm gonna run out of mana also at some point at, uh, you know, the longer bosses, so, you know, it is what it is. Yes, there are some outliers here, such as the poor boomies or shadow priests, but it's not just a well buff those classes issue here. Every single caster is worse off than melee, with the one exception perhaps being warlock. Why are they doing better? Probably because they have life tap, and yeah. can get a lot more mana back during a fight. Also, Warlocks are the only caster who can use two runes in their main rotation, Incinerate Ooh. and Chaos Bolt. And if you can get away with only using runes to deal damage as a caster, you very much want to do that. We'll talk about why later. The other big outlier is Enhancement Shaman, which isn't keeping up with other melee. Why is that? Well, if I had to guess, most of their DPS buttons are still spells, and they have a mana bar to... Oh, uh, true. True. Well... I don't know, is this, that's kind of questionable. I don't know the numbers, but um, Lava Lash is a 6 second cooldown thing that costs, you know, 10 mon essentially, it's 1% or whatever, right? And then you just spam Flame Shock and Earth Shock. And, of, oh, the biggest reason why probably Enchantment Shamans are uh, not performing is Way of the Earth is 
actually the best DPS rune you have, and obviously Blizzard being Blizzard, they did not understand this. You see, the problem with Way of Earth is it's a tank rune, not a DPS rune. But in reality, Way of Earth is the biggest damage upgrade an elemental, uh, not an elemental, but an enchantment shaman can have. <laughs> yeah, and you're not obviously going to use a tank rune in... Well, a raid, right? That's, that's just stupid while you're trying to DPS. So, the reason why you've heard is so overpowered when it comes to dealing damage for element uh, for enchantment shamans is because it puts earth shock on a separate cooldown from uh, fire shock. That's it. That's, that's literally it. And the difference is monumental. The difference is literally monumental. Uh, if you want to deal damage with an uh, M enchantment shaman, you have only Lava Lash to press and fi uh, Fire Shock without that. So, one third of your damage is absolutely capped. Uh, just because you don't have uh, access to Way of Earth and Raids. There you go. Super simple. Content with two. Now, there will always be a best and a worst DPS. That is how World of Warcraft works. Always has, always will do. But from what I can see at the moment, casters are generally worse than physical damage dealers. And though yeah. we are very early into the season, I know that melee outscale casters by a pretty big margin. And some of the True. caster gear that can drop is insane. I mean, pretty much all the gear from BFD is crazy, but check this out, for example. The new epic staff that drops is so good, it would have been level 60 Prebis back in 2019 Classic for <laughs> every single caster. Wow. This is including Diamond loot, and we can get that at level 25. The epic sword that drops is amazing too, but you're gonna replace that at level 40. Even if Blizzard didn't put new weapons in the game, there are better choices. Then again, it is a bit hard to compare weapons between casters and melee. One of them is very dependent on their weapon for damage, the other not so much. And I know, we're level 25, right? We've got new runes coming in the future, but when we level up- Oh, this is, okay, Seal of Martyrdom. Ooh, Divine Storm or that, that's a choice. And I have no idea what the, the, uh, anything else here does. Yeah, it's Paladins, who cares? Everyone gets more powerful. Shadow Priest's underlying issues are not going to be fixed when you get Shadow Form. I'll just say that right now. Bro. So, what's the deal then? Why is physical good, caster bad? The first point is spell ranks. Uh, the irony, of course, of this is casters are leveling so faster than uh, melee classes, though. I mean, that, have you seen how fast a priest levels, uh, levels up? <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Have you seen? Casters just are level, uh, leveling up way more ridiculously better uh, than melee classes, though. Spell ranks existing can put casters in a position where they're just short of being able to rank up their main damage dealing ability. Something I'm sure you've noticed Throw. with runes is that they just scale up as you level, and they do not have spell ranks. On top of that, they cost a percent of your base mana instead of a flat value. And in a large number of cases, rune based abilities are going to be significantly more mana efficient to use than your standard class spells. The ability for spells to scale and not need to be ranked up is a change from cat by the way, and base mana usage came from Wrath. Now, getting a new spell rank is kind of a big deal. For me, on my Warlock at the moment, my best rank of Shadow Bolt is rank 4, learned at level 20. It does 92 to 104 damage. The next rank is 28, which I can't get this phase, and that deals between 150 to... Yeah, it's almost the same as Elemental Shaman. I checked this out. Uh, just your basic nature bolt or lightning strike or whatever that, that stupid ability's name is. Who no one wants to use because it feels bad. Y your next, your rank 4 is on level 26. To 170 shadow damage. So we're talking the difference between me having a button that does on average 98 damage versus one that does 160. Now for melee, however... You know what I want for Season of Discovery? For example, Rogue. I don't know what's uh, what's your rogue specialization currently or whatever. I'm gonna go Duggars and Multilight. I don't care if I'm if that's not the best damage. By the way, I'm just gonna do that because I like it. Okay, we're talking about classic trades are ridiculously easy. You don't need to perform per perfectly to clear a raid. And if even everyone's not performing perfectly, that still means that your raid is only what what five to ten minutes, probably longer. 
Okay, because most of the rage just depend on how fast you're clearing the trash anyway, honestly. I'm gonna be using double daggers. And the thing about... Th there's so many changes that we honestly need quality of life. For example, poisons... They, 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 they still have charges, which is as stupid as it honestly gets. You still you you still have a lot of uh, you still have a lot of basic quality of life problems that should be fixed like you know some buffs lasting only five minutes just make everything baseline one hour this is season of discovery if if you're gonna say oh that's bad go play not season of discovery you stupid schmuck go 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 it's right there if you don't want any changes season of discovery is not for you loser season of discovery is for changing stuff. And one of the qualities of life is definitely improving the buff durations, but you know, there, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of things. I forgot what was my main thing that I wanted to say, but whatever. Spell ranks are not such a big deal as a ton of their. Oh yeah, I actually remember playing a rogue. I would give up f uh, thirty percent of my damage, straight up thirty percent of my damage, just so energy was smoother. Okay, because the reality currently is, if you're playing a rogue, I don't know what's your rotation, uh, but my rotation is pretty much the same classic rotation, AK, it doesn't matter do I backstab or do I sinister strike, at the end of the day the only thing that I, uh, I am using is a slice and dice and that's everything. Literally no other combo points are going anywhere else, there, there, there you have it, it is what it is, you know? I would take away, I, I would be happy if Blizzard took away 30% uh, of my base damage to increase the energy regeneration so I can actually use something else but slice and dice. Because all of my damage rotation is spamming one button like I'm mentally deficient and then it's just a uh, refresh splice and dice. I don't know how it is for everyone else but currently that's the way it is for me. But again, I'm gonna switch to Multilate and then we're gonna see how that goes at some point at least. Don't have the Duggets. But, you know, still, that I, I would love changes like this. It would be a much more better experience playing a Rogue, honestly. You know? Just 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 take away that base damage by 30% and put it back in the ability of us using, you know, combo move finishers. Not just slice and dice. That would be great. Thank you, Blizzard. Abilities aren't tied to stuff such as attack power or weapon damage. Take Rogue, for example. Actually, yeah. Just give us a rune. 100% uh, energy regeneration rate minus 50% damage. I'll use it. Blizzard, do it. Do it. Do it. Well, and Sinister Strike. The best rank they can get by 25 is rank 4, which does weapon damage plus 15. The next rank at level 30 makes them now do weapon damage plus 22. So the difference between these two Small. ranks for the rogue is 7 flat damage. The difference Yeah, be because it scales with the weapon also, obviously. Between the two warlock spells is on average 68 damage. Yep. So all in all, spell ranks are very impactful. In fact, Warlocks don't even press Shadow Bolt. Take it off your bars, put Incinerate on. It costs about half as much mana and deals more damage. And this spell rank difference between melee and casters is across your whole spellbook too. This is just one example so you can see the difference. On top of that, this isn't just a kind of, well, it's like this at 25, but it'll be better later, as each new level cap introduces new breakpoints where casters are short on getting new spell ranks, whereas melee just kind of don't care about them that much. It's only at level True. 60 when things begin to even out. This very much could just be something you have to deal with up to level 60, though. Spell ranks are a big part of classic. Sometimes you want to downrank or use a more mana efficient spell, moving this whole system to scaling as it was in Kata seems like a big step. Perhaps base mana costs are starting to make a bit more sense now though. I mean, I'm just saying, my Shadow Bolt costs 110 mana, and my best rank of life tap restores 75 <laughs> mana. I swear I'm getting an RSI for how much I'm having to tap this season. And I'm a Warlock, so you could say I don't have anything to complain about. Next though, it's not just spell ranks, it's scaling. Straight up scaling. You know, back when WoW first came out, barely any gear had spell power on it, or if it did, it was a very small amount. True. The idea was that 
casters put on intellect and this would allow them to cast more spells and therefore remain relevant over the course of a fight. Eventually though Blizzard did start amping up spell power on items as they realized intellect alone was not enough. This is why typically when you're leveling in vanilla nothing really has spell power on. However, True. these days now, we have a pretty good idea that- When you're leveling in vanilla, when you find something with spell power, man, that, that feels like an experience, not gonna lie. Spell power is rather good, in fact. Ironically, half the casters in the game are still going oom, even with the updated gear, but still. What I'm getting at is that spell power equals damage for casters, and it's a purely secondary stat. Intellect is nice and everything, you need intellect for a good mana bar, but given the choice, you're gonna take spell power for damage. What do melee need for damage? They need agility and strength, but they also benefit from both of these stats for attack power and crit. On the caster side, they have intellect for extra mana so they can cast more. It also gives a small amount of crit. They have spirit, which is meant to aid mana regeneration. And then they have no stats that directly boost their spell damage. It's almost as if something was missing here, like a stat called willpower, where one point equals one or two spell damage. And though the new raid gear not- I wonder if they could actually do that, you know? I really wonder could they actually make a change like that. Remove spell power for, from gear, or at least most of gear, and add just the avil power stat. Would that not work? I wonder, I really do wonder. Updated raid quests start to fix this stat imbalance. Physical damage dealers just get more out of their stats. They scale with percentage buffs such as the ZG buff when we can get that eventually, or Blessing of Kings or Aspect of the Lion. But more importantly than that perhaps is that they can crit with nearly all of their main attacks. So if anything I'll mention today, I'd say this has the biggest potential to change in some shape or form, and I'm 100% sure Blizzard knows how impactful this is, but as we currently are, only direct attacks can crit. Damage over time effects cannot crit in vanilla, so no. everything an affliction lock does basically, shadow priests, boonkins, and so on. They're all severely hamstrung by this game design choice. Moreover, channeled effects cannot crit either, so Blizzard, Rain of Fire, oh, yeah, Hellfire, true. Mind Flay, Hurricane. I hate to pick on the boomies and- Wait, couldn't, couldn't channel effects? I, I, I think I remember Frostbolt's crit, uh, uh, Blizzard critting. Huh. And shadow priests here, but this is why it's not looking too pretty at the moment. And yes, there are melees with very impactful damage over time effects too, such as deep wound. Who would ever do this? Who would ever choose to do this? That's so dumb. You're level 20. These guys are level uh, 15 at best. <laughs> Just one shot him with a spell, dude. Come on. Wounds or Saber Slash especially come to mind. And maybe one day everything should crit, as it can in Wrath, but I think just focus on the classes who are very dependent on these effects at the moment. When you think about it though, it's always seemed a bit strange that it was the case that these types of abilities worked in this way. I'm not entirely sure why, either. Then again, Vanilla is full of cloth gear with strength on it. Dude, you know what I saw uh, two days ago? I was, I was grinding SFK for uh, some bits. A druid tank. Sunfired. Turns out you can do that. You, he sunfired. Uh, he sunfired the guy from this platform, and well, he just pulled everything in an instance. Or maybe it wasn't him. Maybe it was the mage. Some magically how I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, we wiped magically how because no one was magically ready for the fact that you're gonna deal with this guy. But nope, it was bad and originally had a debuff limit of 8. So yeah, maybe someone just did this and everyone went with it. But perhaps certain damage over time or channeled effects should be able to crit via a rune or something of the like in the future, because purely scaling off of spell power just isn't going to cut it. And then of course there are spell resists and partial resists too. Two and a half to three seconds of spell casting, 80 to 100 mana spent, your spell flies towards the boss and resist. Ouch. Melee do have an Hello. equivalent for this too though, through glancing blows as well as dodge, block, all of those things. It's just when a melee attack misses or is gla- I don't know, as melee I literally don't care. <laughs> I just don't. I don't know. Uh, if, if, if any- 
the hit cap ratio is so easy to achieve. It's it's mind blowingly. It, this is not a problem. Lanced, your next swing comes in a few moments later for another chance. And yes, melee do suffer on the turtle boss in BFD, but man, some of those bosses in there have a whole lot of bonus spell resist. Then again, this is very vanilla-like, so maybe it is what it is. Saying everything I've gone through in this video though, I just want to remind you again, we are in a super early version of the season. We're capped at level 25, and we do not know what's coming in the future. I think Blizzard have been doing a great job of rapidly balancing- Look at that, it's mommy. Sing the classes as well as the game as a whole. Yeah, she likes skin tight leather things. Oh, so maybe some of the things I've gone over here are already in line to be addressed. And remember, the logs I showed at the start are for the raid, and the raid is basically a bunch of single target encounters which take a few minutes each. There is more to the game than that. There's PvP, there's gold farming, there's dungeons, there'll be more leveling in the future. And in all of these other areas, casters are doing just fine. Well, ca again, casters are OP at obviously everything else, but single target damage and extended periods of fighting. Again, it's like, have you, have, you, have you seen a priest level up? They're leveling on mobs that are three levels higher than them and just literally and everything's fine. It's not funny, Blizzard. It's not funny. I mean, either way, I thought this was something- Except shamans. Elemental shamans suck so much because a lot, a lot, a lot of burst is, is 25 uh, on the average. Worth talking about for the season. I know we're set for more changes in the future- Oh, look at that. It's the OP scorpion pet, by the way. Uh, I think hunters are, by the way, also the absolute golden boys of example how Blizzard- how bad Blizzard is about balancing this game, okay? The average non- non-moron hunter- did roughly 50% more damage than anyone else in a raid, and 66% of that damage was done by this scorpion pet. Yeah, that's how good Blizzard are at balancing. Future, but discovering that basically every melee spec is better than basically every caster spec in the raid is not quite the discovery that I was hoping to make. And I've been tracking Warcraft logs since early in the season. The physical damage- I have not at all tracked them. I want I want a fun experience, so I'm not gonna track them. Punch dealers are only trending up. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on this topic. Should Blizzard change things? Do you think they already know about these and they're aiming to fix some of these problems later on? Let me know below. Now, if- I don't know if I want Blizzard to fix things, by the way, even honestly. Because- Diablo 4, for example, suffers from Blizzard fixing stuff, okay? You, two days pass, you log in, and suddenly you don't deal any damage because your spec was nerfed. Three days in after that, you come in, uh, come in, log in, and the main... And now everyone is looking down at you for not using some kind of new spec that Blizzard just absolutely overbuffed up the wazoo. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Blizzard trying to balance things in the beginning, honestly. I think that's like a very sad thing. <laughs> anyway, that was Willie, and this was Quizzer Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, and already, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.